What is going on guys? Finneasy Breezy here for a brand new installment in my What Have I Been Watching series. So unlike my last What Have I Been Watching, uh, this is a little bit better planned out. <laughs> I actually do only have four shows uh, to talk to you guys about today, so this video should be uh, considerably shorter than the last one and hopefully a little bit more informative uh, since I remember these <laughs> a lot more vividly than I remembered the other ones. So let's jump right into it with the first thing that I had watched, uh, which was Psycho Pass 2. Uh, and you may note this is something I didn't do an unboxing for. I think that there was just a, a, enough of uh, exposure for this show already out there. And I didn't uh, think uh, my video would be too useful to you guys since I'm sure uh, a lot of you already have interest in this and may have already seen uh, unboxings for it. Um, but to actually go in depth and talk about the show, uh, if you watched Psycho Pass 1, which if you haven't, I highly recommend you watch it. It's fantastic. Um, it's pretty much more of the same. I mean, it, it was almost hard to feel a difference between Psycho Pass 1 and, and Psycho Pass 2. And I, to me, when you name a series, you know, something different. So, for example, Psycho Pass 1, and this is literally called Psycho Pass 2. I mean, there's a giant 2 on the cover. I think it should be different. It's not a second season. It's a second series. Uh, and for me, it really just felt like more of the same. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. I mean, if you really enjoyed Psycho Pass 1, you're going to really enjoy uh, Psycho Pass 2. Uh, it still follows, you know, the main character, uh, Akane, uh, in her never-ending quest to uh, not cloud up her hue. Um, I would say a, a little bit of a theme difference between 1 and 2 is this kind of has a little more of a whore-ish feel to it. Um, it's a lot shorter, so the um, the plot progression from episode 1 to, I think it was episode 12, I mean, it doesn't really say it on here. Maybe it says it on the, on the case itself. Nope, of course not. Why would it? Um, I think it was only 12 episodes. It was a short a short show, um, but the, the plot progression goes pretty quick. I mean, you, you can um, definitely see from, like, you know, the first two or three episodes that it, it, it it's packed. It's packed with plot. Um, but my, the point I'm trying to make is that maybe around, like, episode 4 or 5, when they start, like, brutally killing people in an almost torturous fashion in a few of the episodes, it kind of gets a little creepy, and, and like, the hairs will stand up on the back of your neck. Um, so if that was something that you were looking for in, in part 1 that might have been lacking in your perspective, um, that's definitely something that is, is included in Psycho Pass 2 uh, um, in, in, in a good extreme in a few cases. So I'm not going to talk about the actual plot in too much detail because I don't want to ruin it for any of you guys who, who do want to watch it that haven't seen it. But uh, this is probably going to be a little bit of a spoiler here. So I'm going to put a little banner of a spoiler and I will put a timestamp where you can skip to uh, if you want to avoid this. So if you remember in, uh, you know, Psycho Pass 1 where the uh, overarching villain, if you could say, was the Sybil system itself, which was just a network of uh, asymptomatic brains. Uh, that sort of judged the character of all of the individuals in the world that the show takes place in, uh, was sort of the main villain uh, to a degree in Psycho Pass 1. It's back in Psycho Pass 2, and it almost feels like the exact same, um, you know, things happen from Psycho Pass 1 and Psycho Pass 2. You know, in, in the first uh, series, Akane and Kogami spend so much time trying to figure out, you know, what the civil system is, getting to the civil system, and, and, and all of the stuff revolving around the brains themselves, and this and that. And the second series sort of ends in the same fashion, where, once again, Akane is sitting in front of the brains of the civil system, and it's sort of like this um, uh, deus ex machina sort of uh, ending, where, guess what, same thing happened. Um, so th that lends back to my original point of it's kind of more of the same. Nevertheless, I highly recommend uh, you watch Psycho Pass 2, especially, uh, especially if you watch Psycho Pass 1. Uh, it just adds on to the experience, and it gives you more of the universe uh, that you, you may love. Uh, and I know that the, the movie is, uh, should be released fairly soon, um, so maybe I will do a little bit of a review of that movie when it comes out. Okay, so here's something that I alluded to in the previous uh, What Have I Been Watching uh, vlog, uh, and that is uh, Samurai Girls. Uh, yes, I watched Samurai Girls and Samurai Bride, uh, something that I had picked up in the Right Stuff Christmas special. And if you did watch my last episode, you may have uh, remembered when I said that the fan service was so extreme that it takes away from the show. Uh, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, the fan service is so out there and so blatantly just distracting 
that it's almost like why even why is there even a plot? Why are you even having characters? Why aren't you just having naked women on the screen and that's the end of it? Um, <laughs> because that's almost how I feel when watching this show. And you know, the more and more I watched, it, I was interested. Don't get me wrong, I, I enjoyed watching it. Um, but it's extremely forgettable once it's over. I mean, there's no real redeeming factors to this show. Um, you know, the the superpowers, all, all the, the the plot about this is our main character who's not on the cover. Um, I forget what his name is. Something with an, an N. Uh, I don't know. That was his name. Something started with an N. Let, let, let me look it up. Okay, so the main character's name is Muniakira. I was kind of close. I thought it was an N. It was actually an M. Um, but in any case, my point is uh, the main character, Muniakira, he has this ability where if he kisses a girl, she turns into a, uh, a great samurai, and she has all these supernatural abilities. And that's pretty much what the plot is about. You know, he, he has all of these women around him that slowly and slowly get kissed and whatnot and become uh, samurais. I would say the first series, uh, you know, Samurai Girls, is a lot better uh, than Samurai Bride. Samurai Bride almost takes the plot and character development that was um, a part of the first series and just throws it out the window and decides to make it into more of like a harem comedy, an etchy harem comedy, and it's almost really not enjoyable to a degree. I mean, they even have a, um, was a monkey? He kisses a monkey and makes the monkey into a samurai girl. And, you know, she's got, you know, a chest and everything. And it's just a little bit too weird for my taste. So I would say Samurai Girls is something that you can pass on completely. No need to stream it. No need to buy it for sure. Um, I, I think that it, if, you know, if you are a fan of Over the Top Etchy Harem and you really don't care and you just want to see something else, then you might enjoy it. I mean, there is a plot there. Don't get me wrong. But the fan service takes away from anything. So, you know, that could be your cup of tea. If it is, you'll enjoy it. But I don't think that you guys need to, to check this one out. So here's something I know that you're all going to love uh, to hear my thoughts about and that I finally watched. And that was Parasite the Maxim. I finally sat down. I watched Parasite the Maxim. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's so far from when I bought it and unboxed it. Maybe a, a week or two after uh, once I finished, you know, shows that I have. Uh, already started watching, um, but it is fantastic. Uh, this show definitely deserved the hype that it got. Uh, and, you know, I even tried to look up some reviews and some thoughts about uh, what some people, uh, you know, gave this show. And a lot of people were like, oh, my God, it's so gory. Oh, my God, it's so, like, just, ugh, I can't watch it. And, yeah, it is like that. Um, but I powered through it and watched it because, hey, I paid for it. I better be watching it. Um, <laughs> uh, but I thought it was extremely, extremely interesting. A different sort of anime than um, a lot of the shows that are out there now. Um, I can't think of anything too, too similar uh, uh, to a show like this. Um, so pretty much if you want to know what happens, I'm going to try and be extremely brief about this because this is something I definitely recommend you guys watch. Uh, if you're a big fan of anime, there's no question. Um, but there is this uh, parasite, uh, I don't want to say race, but there's a parasite that just all of a sudden shows up. Uh, I'm only talking about the first uh, 13 episodes. I haven't seen part two yet. I'm going to unbox it when I get it, but I haven't seen that yet. So I don't know if there's a backstory to parasites. Um, but there's this parasite that shows up and uh, it can go into a human body and its whole purpose is to go to the brain which it then takes over and pretty much owns the body it uh it uses the body to for its own will the, the person inside at that point is dead uh and it can pretty much just blend in with society and, and you wouldn't know otherwise so what happens to our main character uh shinichi is he has this sort of phobia of bugs uh so when he wakes up in the middle of the night uh and sees a bug crawling up his arm and trying to pretty much get into him he uh wraps around i think it was a cord around his arm to stop the blood flow which then uh stopped the parasite from going to his brain uh and then in turn the parasite took over his hand um so the the plot pretty much is revolved around the relationship of the parasite that now uh inhabits his his hand and uh, Shinichi, uh, and you know, he gives the, the parasite a name, his name's Megi, and it's sort of the beginning parts of the show are sort of like a comedic little uh, ditty between Shinichi and Megi and, and how their interactions change. And then as the plot progresses, um, you know, some things happen to Shinichi in his life and around him that just completely alters his character. And he almost starting to become, towards the end of the, the first 13 episodes, He's starting to become an anti-hero, in my opinion. Sort of like how in Death Note, when you start out watching Light, and you're you're totally in Light's camp, but then towards the end where he kills L, you're starting to feel more for L than Light because of the kind of um, you know personality change that happens. 
Um, I was starting to feel the same thing with Shinichi, so I'm looking forward to watching part two to see uh, what happens, especially between you know the relationship between uh, Shinichi and and Migi, and you know Migi, especially when he first got implanted uh, into uh, Shinichi, he had you know no human emotion, no you know rationale, nothing. He was just he's a creature, you know, kill, eat, feed, whatever. Um, but then towards the end, you know, you start to see a little bit of a change in Migi, so. Um, that's one thing I really do enjoy about this show is just the the character development where you start with Migi here and Shinichi here and then as the show progresses this is starting to what what's happening sort of like with with Light and L so I can make that really uh, really good uh, analogy um which you know lends to if you like a show like Death Note I think you're going to really like uh Parasite the Maxim it's if if you're okay with you know gore and murder and horror and scary stuff so, highly, highly recommend uh, Parasite. Uh, I would say stream it if you if you have the ability to. I'm going to say pass on buying it, especially this limited edition, which I think I paid seventy dollars for because I think I had gotten it on like a sale or something like that. But I think it, it it like it was supposed to be ninety bucks. No way is that worth it. Any you know fathom of the imagination. Um, but I would keep your eye out. Uh, I know the uh, the Sentai stuff drops in value quite quickly. Um, Especially around the time where um, Right Stuff does, you know, big sales. So you might be able to pick up the, the standard Blu-ray case for $30, $25, $30. And that, I would say, is a good buy. So the final show that I have to talk to you guys about is a show that seriously struck me. Uh, a show that I fell completely in love with and I think is probably one of the best shows I've ever seen in this genre and in this vein. Surprisingly, the show I'm talking about is Kokoro Connect. Uh, and if you've never heard of Kokoro Connect, I don't blame you. I mean, I remember, um, you know, maybe about a year or two ago when, you know, you get the right stuff manual and advertisements and, and, and flyers and whatnot, or, or, you know, when you buy stuff, you get little postcards. I remember getting a postcard for Kokoro Connect and I was like, what? I don't even, I don't want to watch this crap. And then when they had the right stuff sale and it was $20, $25, I was like, eh, why not? Let's pick it up. And I'm glad I did. The show was utterly and 100% engrossing and uh, just you know fascinating watch uh if you like shows like uh you know clan ed and um you know even to the degree of some comedy elements to it maybe like um Hagen I, uh i would say this is something that you should no doubt check out um i don't want to really talk about the plot because it's so you know so many strings and so many different um aspects to it so i'll try and keep it brief for you guys because i am going to say check this out no question um, but pretty much you have five high school kids who uh, are not really um, friends, so to say, in the beginning. Um, but they all needed to join a club uh, because they weren't part of one. So they made one. Uh, and that's where they sort of, you know, made the initial connection to each other. And then this sort of supernatural being, uh, you know, introduced itself to them and explained that they're going to be a different set of phenomena um, happening to them. And, you know, the first one is the only one I'm going to talk about since it's, you know, the first one. Um, they switch, uh, you know, I don't want to say switch brains in the bodies, but their their personalities get swapped. So, for example, if I had someone here, which I do not, um, <laughs> my, my personality would be implanted into them, theirs into mine, for a short period of time. You know, could be 45 seconds, could be five minutes. And as you can imagine, that would lead to a lot of confusion, a lot of um, misunderstandings, a lot of different um, ways to uh, interpret situations. And that is where this show shines tremendously. Um, just watching their, their interactions with themselves, their interactions with other people, trying to avoid uh, other people finding out about what's going on to the five of them, um, and their interactions with the, 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 fun of the, the, the creature um, that, you know, is doing this to them is called Heartseed. Uh, their interactions with Heartseed, it's just so engrossing. Engrossing is the best word I can use to describe this because you want to watch episode after episode after episode to see what happens to these guys. There's also a four episode uh, OVA. It's called an OVA, but it really is just, you know, the, the finishing of this. I think this was 13 episodes. Yeah, this is 13 episodes, and then the OVA is pretty much just, it, it's, a, it's a 17 episode show. There was no reason to separate the two of them. Um, but I, I watched that too, obviously, which wraps it all up in a nice bow. It has an ending. I do know that the, the visual novel goes on uh, and, and keeps the story going, introduces more characters and whatnot. Um, 
but unfortunately there was no official translation release for those, so I can't go down to Barnes & Noble and pick them up. Um, but if I did want to, I can uh, go online and read fan translations, and that's something that you can do as well if you are really um, you know, captivated by this show in the same way that I was. Um, but one of my favorite aspects of this show, which is something that does not happen often, and I can go down the list of show after show after show after show where this is the main character and this is the girl that I wanted him to wind up with and it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. In this show, it happened. Uh, so I'm not saying I'm biased as to that is the reason why I enjoyed this so much. But when you are watching an anime and, and you know, you sort of put yourself into the main character, which is very easy to do for, for anime fans and it's part of the experience in my uh, in my mind... When you when the main character winds up with with best girl, you sort of just you feel like a, a good sense of accomplishment, <laughs> like almost like you willed it to happen, and, and and something that that really adds to my enjoyment of this show. Above all else, I highly recommend Kokoro Connect, especially if you are only a fan of fighting anime, of horror anime, of you know just shonen and just different types of genre, but you never really cared about uh, a drama. I highly recommend you check this one out because I think you will be so captivated by the characters and so captivated by their personalities and their interactions that you're going to forget that you're watching an anime and you're going to become more open to other drama series like this. I don't think you need to buy this. Uh, there really is nothing fancy about the box set. I mean, or the, the DVD, I should say. It doesn't come with anything. I mean, I'm sure the Blu-ray doesn't really come with anything. There's no special features that sort of wow you. Um, so if you're a big fan of streaming, I'd say go ahead and stream it. But then again, if you're a collector like myself and you just want to add something else to the shelf that you can go back and watch again, which I think you will. I know I will. I don't think it's going to be tomorrow, um, but I know I'm going to watch this again. Um, so if you're willing to, to drop the $20, 25 to, to pick something up that you know you're going to enjoy and see multiple times, highly recommend Kokoro Connect. So there we go, guys. The last four anime that I watched, you know, let me know down below in the comments if you have seen any of these shows, if you plan on watching them, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on any of them. I love to know what you guys think. As you know, I try and get back to everyone who comments. I love having a dialogue between you guys. Uh, it's part of the community. Uh, we can all share our thoughts. You know, maybe you really did not like Kokoro Connect and then we can never be friends. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, or, you know, maybe you actually really didn't enjoy Parasite. I know that there's a lot of people. It's sort of like a polarizing show. Um, so, you know, let me know your comments. I'd love to know what you guys' thoughts are. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you guys enjoy what I do and you want to see more videos from me. Uh, we're getting pretty far up there in subscribers. I think, you know, we just passed 750, uh, which in my mind is huge. I never imagined we'd have more than 100. Uh, so it's nice to see the community growing. I'm glad that we can all be a part of it together. Uh, and, you know, if there's something special that you guys want to see from me that I'm not putting out, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if enough people want to see something that I'm more than willing to, to try and go ahead and, and throw that together for you guys. My name's Easy breezy, and I will see you all next time.